Hey guys, it's Liv here, and in today's video, I wanted to discuss why this new Pokemon on your screen, Belly Bolt, is going to be broken in VGC. If you guys are looking forward to content like this and you want to see more Scarlet and Violet videos, leaving a like on the video is the easiest way to let me know that you want to see more content like this, and subscribe for more, because even after this video, we're obviously going to be covering Scarlet and Violet to all hell and back, so you guys will have a ton of content to look forward to. Also, I'm very sorry that my, my hair is finally fading the dye that was blue, it's now green screening through, so it just unfortunate i'll have to, to take care of that oh fuck okay well anyway not time time to get into belly bolt um so belly bolt it's a very interesting pokemon that was just revealed it's pure electric type this was the iono pokemon if you guys saw the trailer that everyone was upset about on wednesday this was got revealed on friday i was at work though so we're talking about it today uh, it has two abilities one is static is pretty standard electric ability but the more important one though and why i think this will actually be an amazing pokemon is this ability right here electromorphosis so we're going to skip down to the bottom which is where all the important stuff for the competitive aspects are uh belly bolt's ability electromorphosis is a new ability appearing for the first time in these titles belly bolt char becomes charged when it hit by an attack boosting the power of the next electric move that it uses so for anyone who is unfamiliar with what Charged is, this is actually reference to a very old move called Charged. This is a very terrible move in competitive, but the ability does present a lot of potential because typically you would have to take two turns to utilize Charge. Uh, you would click it on turn one, let's say, or turn five or whatever turn you're clicking it on. And then the following turn or really whatever your next electric trap attack is, gets doubled. Typically, this would be used in succession though, but occasionally you might use another move first, which would be perfectly fine. It does also have the added benefit of boosting your special defense, which is a pretty cool benefit, but I don't think this ability will be copying that, since it seems like it's really just copying specifically the attack boost, and the trailer did also seem to confirm this. If it boosted the spadef as well, that'd be even crazier, but it specifically just seems like the next electric type attack that is going to be used will be charged, which if the ability itself doesn't have well if the ability itself has the same boost that charge has this should be a two times boost this basically is the equivalent of giving belly bolt a double boosted attack in either physical or special so if let's say a belly bolt was going to do around 30 percent to something it's next electric type attack will do 60 percent now so it's an incredible buff for it and it can even activate in the same turn obviously if belly bolt was to attack slower it seems like it's just the next attack regardless so you could actually utilize this pretty well with something like a weakness policy variant for example and make sure that you have a pokemon slower than belly bolt to then click some sort of super effective attack with bulldoze or even outside of super effective attacks you could always go with like a citrus berry set or like an assault vest set depending on how bulky this is and go for a priority hit instead you don't even need trick room at that point you just use priority though not to say you can't use this in trick room because it does seem like this is going to be a slower pokemon which the trailer also did seem to kind of hint at uh, i can't specifically find where it said it in here but i know that iona mentioned that it's typically a slower moving pokemon so one of the Pokemon that I decided we're going to compare it to today is none other than Ampharos. Now, Ampharos, I felt like was a pretty fair comparison for this Pokemon. It has 510 BST, which is a little high for a fully evolved Pokemon, but it's still rather average. Uh, this, on top of that, also has a fairly slow speed stat, but it's not slow enough to where we would be saying this has to be a slow Pokemon, which again was what the, the wording was. It was, it could move fast if it wanted to, but it was typically a slower Pokemon. So I would anticipate it's somewhere between like here and base 80 speed if I had to guess. Maybe we'll get lucky and it's a slower Pokemon, but I wouldn't get my hopes up. And on top of that as well, I felt like it was a little bit fair because Ampharos is a semi-bulky electric type Pokemon. It has a decent special attack, which a lot of electric types just naturally have anyway. So I didn't really think that this was giving anything too extreme to any category or like some insane what if theory modding. I felt like Ampharos is a pretty fair comparison. If I really wanted to cheat the system, I'd have picked Vikavolt, which is even slower and it's more of a breaker. So using Ampharos as a comparison here, uh, let's, let's talk about it. So right off the bat, as you can see here, I do have a weakness policy. I threw static as a placeholder, but the ability would obviously be the uh, electromorphosis. And currently the moves are discharge and protect. Uh, discharge seems pretty obvious at the very least and protect it's a given on pretty much every pokemon i didn't want to get too in depth and assuming that you know what if this gets scald because it's a frog or what if it gets energy ball because the ability seems to run off of energy even though these are very likely things and they would make this even better because it would have ground coverage unlike certain top tier electrics like lecky have proven that you, you really don't even actually need in vgc if we're going to be honest you just need a partner to kill them uh so thanks to lecky actually proving this you don't even really actually need that and, and that's another point actually uh, that this Pokemon could actually just get by off of pure electric attacks. And 
considering the fact that this does, again, seem to be a slower Pokemon, Trick Room would be my guess of the playstyle. And I did end up making some calcs earlier this morning before preparing this video. If you were to take just this Ampro set right here, you were to pop a weakness policy with a slower Trick Room Bulldoze Pokemon, and then you were to attack a Spideff Grass type. This is specifically because Grass is a resistance and it's not an outright immunity, and immunity would obviously be taking zero damage. But let's say you were to attack Serena. This is a fairly average Spideff Grass type, well, average AV Grass type at least, and I max out the Spideff. This also was pretty much one of the more Spideff Grass types as of the leaked returning Pokemon list, which was actually proven wrong in this trailer. We, we saw Toxic Oak on this, but I'm going off of that to base my calc, so that's why I picked Serena. I feel like it was a fairly easy pick. Uh, after the modest, well, after the quiet special attack, the weakness policy, and the double because you are now attacked this turn, you would be doing around 52% minimum to Serena if it was holding an Assault Vest and max speed F, max HP. And again, Serena's not a frail Pokemon either. I do just have to mention that. I wouldn't say it's really bulky, but 72 HP and 98 speed F goes a pretty long way when you also in tandem with that throw on Assault Vest on this Pokemon. So, Considering all of that, and obviously there will probably be some sort of more spadef grass that comes out through the games. Uh, Moongus is another one we could actually even go over, but that one typically doesn't run an Assault Vest. So I felt like that there was probably a better option to calc here than a Moongus. But let's say we pull up Ampharos again, and we account for doubles, and we go for Discharge. Oh, and actually my calc is for Thunderbolt. I, I have to point that out. My initial calc is actually for Thunderbolt. But we can also obviously go for just Thunderbolt. That's another thing this Pokemon will probably get. Um, but if we go for the plus two, obviously, after the weakness policy pops, uh, this Pokemon would, again, do, to spit F Amoongus, do around 28 to 33%. You could technically go for Assault Vest and Amoongus, and that would actually be able to get around this. Um, and I will also say that Discharge would obviously be chewable. This would only do around, like, 40% minimum. It's, like, 38 to 45% is what the roll looks like on Amoongus, which takes the rolls about as well as Serena does. Like, this is still doing a significant amount of damage to Pokemon, even very spadef Pokemon, even resistances that we typically think of. And while it's not as egregious as something like a Dracovish, for example, or a Dracozolt, it's nearing that territory in all honesty, especially when you have to account that we no longer have a Dynamax metagame. So I do think this Pokemon, unless they really fuck up its stat line, will actually be pretty good. And there's also some cases to be made that for a physical set potentially working, but I lean towards special because most electric types are. This charges a spread move the benefits while you also have the Thunderbolt calcs. And physical would actually be a lot more manageable because you have a lot of common intimidators. Uh, for example, Landers is currently leaked to return. Crook is pretty much confirmed to return. We have Mence and Gyarados, though Gyarados would be a terrible switch in. Arcanine. So a lot of intimidators as well as potential for burn. So in my opinion, it would be a very intimidate heavy meta anyway and it would be a lot more manageable to manage this if it was a physical attacker, but I'm going to guess it's a special one. So with that in mind, uh, if you were to use this, let's say, let's go over some Pokemon that I think would be very good pairs with this on the Trick Room strategy. Uh, now, I'm not going to be going over a full necessarily team, I guess, for this, for lack of a better word, because we don't actually know what the meta will look like, but if you're looking for a partner for this Pokemon, here's a few that I thought might be pretty good, and I gave an example set for each, though there's no guarantees would be the sets. Uh, first up, we have Torkoal. I base this mostly off of VGC, like the Series 9 Torkoals, which were running Eruption, Protect, Heatwave with Charcoal. And I threw on Solar Beam here. Uh, this was mostly just to help with clearing through ground types, though Eruption will be great for pretty much any ground type that's not like Rhyperior or Gastrodon. So I threw Solar Beam on there because it hits both of those four times, which is pretty beneficial actually when, Ampro uh, when Belly Bolt might not even have coverage for either of those Pokemon. Again, I feel like stuff like Energy Ball is pretty implied, but this could be a pretty good Trick Room option in tandem with Belly Bolt because a lot of teams will already struggle switching in on Torkoal and the counterplay overlaps enough with specifically Gastron. It's really the only Mon that we can assume that and Rhyperior are the only two, but Torkoal beats both those anyway. So as far as Trick Room grounds, there's not really anything that would both beat Torkoal and without, of course, taking a Solar Beam or an Eruption, which in the Sun boosted at full HP will still massacre most grounds. Uh, but there's also nothing that can beat both Torkoal and Ampharos is the particular. So both of those in tandem should be absolute monsters in Trick Room. But speaking of Trick Room, we do actually need a setter, which I have not actually went over yet. Um, so, well, actually, first I want to go over one more Pokemon for the grounds. If you're looking for a Bulldoze Pokemon to pop the weakest policy, this is a decent one, uh, albeit this would be more so if you're specifically looking for a ground type to do it, which could be beneficial, obviously. Having a ground type is never a bad thing in VGC. Earthquake is a really good move, and especially if you're trying to be a Trick Room team, one of your best Pokemon to counter you would arguably be opposing Belly Bolts, 
because mostly from the fact that Belly Bolt also does a lot of damage to itself. I actually compared the Calyx versus Spidef Ampharos earlier, just again, because I think it's a pretty fair comparison to be making here stat-wise, and it still did with Thunderbolt around like the 52% mark, which again, fucking insane. So having a ground tape will be pretty important for opposing Belly Bolt on Trick Room, and Mudsaw I thought was a pretty good one. This is a slow enough Bulldoze Pokemon to where you can outpace, even if it does reach like the Vikavolt speed tier of 43, you would still most likely underpace it. On top of that as well, you would have the ability to pop your weakness policy. Rock Slide is great for Pokemon that are immune to grounds. You have Body Press, which is going to be great in tandem with Stamina, and especially with Citrus Berry. You could free up an item slot for something else to run, like a Leftovers, which a lot of the other Pokemon I found would either probably run Leftovers, would prefer Weakness Policy, which Belly Bolt would be running in this case, or maybe they're just running a Citrus Berry, which in that case they'd be Lateral Moves. Uh, but I, I figured that Mudsail would be a pretty safe option here. Uh, Mudsail also, in my opinion, was a pretty terrifying ground type defensively speaking as far as series 17 go oh, uh, vgc 17 goes and the meta reminds me a lot of vgc 17 looking at a lot of the pokemon that we seem to have leaked so far we have other pokemon like arcanine salamence so i do think that especially with those two being some of the better pokemon we also uh let me let me pull up the list actually because there were a few others that i noticed um, it seems like we have Garchomp back again, which again was another monster in 17, though that was more so because of Z moves. But Terrastal also seems like it's going to be pretty proportional to Z as far as what it does, just scarier. So I doubt Garchomp will be necessarily bad in this format. Uh, but especially with that, oh, we also would have Landorus coming back, which Landorus again, just another good Pokemon, albeit Landorus wasn't allowed in 17, but it was still allowed in 18, and they were similar enough at least to where obviously Lando will be really good. Um, but in tandem with all of those, I do think that that means that Mudsail will also still probably be pretty good in Trick Room teams, or just as a general resist, uh, a general switch in, I guess, to a degree to Monza Garchomp, because with Stamina plus Citrus Berry, you're actually a pretty decent physical wall, and Body Press is a decent option to also then attack those Pokemon back. So I won't act like Mudsail will be like the greatest scrap type of all time, but I think it'll at least be viable, and on a Trick Room team like this, Mudsail would probably be an amazing Pokemon to pop a policy with. But Speaking of though, we do actually need Trick Room setters, and I found two actually that not only set Trick Room, but they also pop policy with Bulldoze, and they, in each of their own ways, do pressure grounds to a certain degree. Uh, the first one being Bronzong. Now, Bronzong pressures grounds more so from just the immunity to them and the fact that most grounds can't really actually break it. So it's less so that Bronzong's going to break grounds very quickly, but it's going to at least take hits from them very well. Um, in tandem with this as well, you could typically beat most grounds with Body Press, and you could always switch over something like a Protect to an Iron Defense. You don't really actually need Protect on this Pokemon in all honesty, uh, but I threw in Protect here just because it's a pretty standard move on most Pokemon, and it's not a move that Bronzong necessarily minds running either. Uh, but typically though, you'd run Trick Room, Body Press, Iron Defense, and then Filler. Uh, I figured in this case though, you'd probably want to take advantage of Bulldoze and most likely being slower than Belly Bolt, because again, I can't imagine it's going to be like a 20 base speed Pokemon. If it is, then I guess you'll need room service. But in this sort of situation, I figured that Bulldoze Bronzong could be a pretty good option, actually. It's also a Pokemon that in general is a pretty good Trick Room Pokemon. There's not really been a bad generation for Bronzong, albeit it's just never really the best Trick Room setter either. I, and that kind of fits the bill here too, because while I'm sure that there is a better Trick Room setter if I really looked at the board than specifically Bronzong, it's one that I think pairs well enough with Belly Bolt, especially since you're not going to actually be hitting it for a very hard Bulldoze, because Bronzong doesn't need to run an attack investment, which is something it has over Mud still. It's also slightly slower, which means that you're actually going to be able to at least drop the speed before, which is also pretty well, uh, before a lot of other Pokemon, which is also pretty good. Uh, in tandem with that as well, it's a Pokemon that can still pressure a lot of the more offensive ground types because you're immune to them, which similar again to Mud still. And unlike a lot of Trick Room Pokemon, you can do this all in one single option. So that means I could just outright lead with Ampharos and Bronzong instead of needing to then go for a Trick Room option and then bring in either Mudsdale or bring in Belly Bolt to then try and pop the policy. So Bronzong, I felt like could be a pretty good option in this regard, but I do have one other Pokemon that I actually think will be decent despite having been a pretty terrible Pokemon in the Gen 8 metagame. Uh, and that would be none other than Slowbro. Slowbro I actually felt like would probably be the best case scenario for a Belly Bolt partner. Despite being a very weird fit for VGC, it's not a Pokemon you really see a lot, but I thought this did offer a few actually really key points. For one, I thought this could be an amazing Trick Room option, considering obviously it's a Trick Room on and it's very slow, uh, but it's also hitting base 30, it's the slowest of the Bulldoze Pokemon we've mentioned so far. 
This also would be a Pokemon that in its own way could actually just break ground types, unless their name is Gastrodon. But in that case, I would either A, hope Belly Bolt gets a grass move, or B, find a really good Trick Room Grass. There's options like Delmize that seem to be leaked so far. Uh, Serena's just not a bad grass at all, whether Trick Room or otherwise, it's just a good grass type that you could throw on there. Um, but the point being, just throw on something for the Gastrodon matchup, even if it's just Torkoal with Solar Beam, and you're sitting pretty. Speaking of Torkoal, uh, in tandem with Slowbro, you would be able to use Trick Room, go for Protect and Torkoal that turn, and then from there, just massacre Gastrodon before Belly Bolt even came in, because you're slower than Gastrodon, and your Sun Boosted Solar Beam would be amazing for taking that Pokemon out. So, in, in all those situations, I feel like that Slowbro actually would be a pretty strong option. This also, unlike something such as Bronzong and Mudsdale, has its own built-in recovery thanks to Slack Off. And even if you do need to slow without Slowbro after taking a hit, you'll have Regenerator to gain even more HP back. So I think this is a Pokemon that really there's actually no reason not to run with Belly Bolt in my opinion. I know it's not typically a popular Pokemon for Trick Room in at least this last generation, but we also had a lot of really strong Trick Room setters. We had Pokemon such as Poirion 2, Dusclops, Indeedee. Uh, to be fair, Indeedee is also another one, but similarly to something like a Mudsdale, you're only getting one of the rolls that way and you need to then get it out of the field. And also Trick Room on Indeedee is only actually available on mail. However, you could always throw this on uh, Belly Bolt on Psy Spam and go for like an Indeedee hat and then go for like a Misty Explosion on hat afterwards or something. I don't know. There's a lot of options you could in theory do. But I think that Slowbro is just the simplest one if you're trying to find a partner. Because again, similarly to Bronzong as well, you don't actually need to invest in attack, which means you can make it a very weak Bulldoze. And on top of this as well, the attack stat, it's weaker than Bronzong. So again, you're doing even less damage to Belly Bolt. So I do think that personally, this would be the Pokemon I would think would be the best partner for Belly Bolt. But let me know what you would actually run with Belly Bolt. Uh, Again, I know this video is mostly VGC oriented. There would be, in theory, ways you can make Belly Bolt work in singles, even if it's just like a Focus Sash set into a Volt Switch and getting a really strong pivot and then having a sack for later on. Uh, th there are definitely ways you could make it work, but I think they're a lot more gimmicky. And in VGC, there are ways to very efficiently optimize this ability to become an absolute monstrous option. But if you enjoy this type of content and you want to see more videos just like it, leave a like on the video and subscribe for more. Shout out to our channel members, of course. You guys help the channel immensely. Those being Josh, aka Ultra Player, Mia, and Zeke Zero. If you guys, of course, want to support the channel and go the extra mile, make sure that you hit the channel membership button. The link is in the description below. And with that said, I will see you guys in tomorrow's video. And until then, peace out, guys.